video will cover drawing Lewis structures for chemical compounds. Before we can begin, let's define a few things. What is a chemical formula? A chemical formula shows the number and kinds of atoms that make up a compound. The element symbols represents the type of atoms, and subscripts following the symbol represents the number of each kind of atom present in the compound. So what can we say? It is, um, shows the number and kind of atoms in a compound. And let's give an example. An example is calcium chloride. And we can write this formula as CaCl2. Notice that we have our symbol, our chemical symbols. And here we have our subscript which tells us the number of a specific type of atom. We have another example where we have something like methane, which is CH4, where we notice that the C and the H represent our symbols, and the four says that we have four hydrogen atoms in our compound. Calcium chloride is an ionic compound, and methane is a covalent compound. Notice here we have calcium chloride. This is an ionic compound. CMPD stands for compound, and it's representing that I have one calcium ion and two chloride ions. Over here for methane, once again, you might not be able to see, but the four here represents four H atoms. Okay? Now that we've defined chemical formula, Let's define what a Lewis structure is. Lewis structures are mainly written only for covalent compounds and polyatomic ions since their atoms are held together by covalent bonds. A polyatomic ion is a group of nonmetal atoms when bound together have a disparate positive to negative charge. If it's a positive polyatomic ion, it has fewer electrons than protons. If it's negative, it has more electrons than protons. So Lewis structures are, are a way to help us visualize what a compound looks like. So Lewis structures show, shows the bonds between atoms. <clears throat> as pairs of shared valence electrons. We have um, a single line for one pair. We'll have two lines for two pairs. And we'll have three lines for three pairs. And those lines represent the bonds between individual atoms. Any unshared electrons are shown surrounding the atoms as dots. One dot for one electron, two dots for two electrons. Okay? So, when we're taking a look at a Lewis diagram or a Lewis structure, we have something called shared electrons and unshared pairs of electrons. When we have electrons that are shared, we call those bonded pairs.
And when we have unshared pairs of electrons, we call those lone pairs. Remember these words because we're going to use them later when we take a look at how to draw our Lewis structures. Before we begin, let's take a look at how we draw the Lewis structures for individual atoms. Lewis structures for atoms allows us to see how many electrons or valence electrons are present in each um, element. Make sure you have a copy of a periodic table with you while we go through these practice problems. I will try to go back and forth to take a look at each um, element. I'll do the first four with you, and you can pause the video after I finish the first four to complete the rest of the table, and then I'll give you the answers. So let's take a look. We're going to take a look at calcium first. Let's find calcium on the periodic table. Calcium is here on the periodic table. Notice that it is in, it is in group two. So because it is in group two, it will have, oops, it will have two valence, it's in group two, and it will have two valence electrons. When we draw an atom that has two valence electrons, we draw them in this way. When drawing Lewis dot structures for atoms, you draw one, electron at a time, one dot at a time, and you go around the uh, symbol. Since we have two electrons that are available, calcium is capable of making two bonds. Let's take a look at selenium. Selenium is here in group Six, this periodic table lists them as one through 18, but if you remember the Roman numeral numbering system, this is 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, and 8A, which is why I'm calling it groups one through eight. So selenium is in group 6A. <laughs> selenium is in group 6A. There we go. So it was in group 6A. Let's put an A over there. It's in group 6A. That means it has six valence electrons. The group number tells you the number of valence electrons of, of your element. So let's draw our selenium. It's got six electrons. We start one at a time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Selenium has six electrons. Notice that whenever we are making bonds, an atom is going to make bonds so that it has an octet, or eight electrons in its valence shell. And being that selenium has six valence electrons, it's got two that are unpaired, it's able to make two bonds as well. Let's take a look at neon. Neon is here, it's found, it's a, it's a noble gas, it's found in group eight. So what that means is, neon is in group 8A. The group number lets us know that it has eight valence electrons. And so let's draw neon, try to make it smaller so it fits inside the box. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice that neon has eight electrons surrounding it, and there's no need to make any bonds because every element or every atom wants to have eight electrons in their valence shell. So neon is not capable of making any bonds because it already has enough electrons. Let's take a look at carbon. Carbon is located here in group four. So, so 
in group 4A. That means it has four valence electrons. And if we draw carbon, notice that it has one, two, three, four electrons in its Lewis dot structure. Well, it has four electrons. It needs four more electrons, so that means it can make four bonds. So if you look at an element, you determine how many electrons they either have to give or how many electrons they have to share. So I take a look back at calcium. Calcium only has two electrons in its valence shell. It's a lot easier for it to give up those electrons than to take electrons from somewhere else. So those electrons can be used for a bond. Selenium needs two electrons, so it's better for them to take two electrons and to give two electrons away to make that um, an eight in the valence shell. <clears throat> All right, take a moment and pause the video and solve the rest of these problems on your own, and I'll come back and give you the answers. Okay, now let's check your answers to make sure that you answer the rest of them properly. Cesium is found in group 1A. It has one valence electron, and if we draw, if we, if we draw the valence electrons that are around cesium, we have one valence electron is capable of making one bond. Aluminum is in group 3A. It has three valence electrons, and in its structure, we can see the three valence electrons in aluminum, and it is capable of making three bonds. Fluorine is in group 7A. It has seven valence electrons. Here we see our structure for fluorine. It has seven electrons surrounding the symbol, and it can only make one bond. Phosphorus is in group 5A, five valence electrons, and here we have our structure of phosphorus. <clears throat>